YouTube, I'm the Bearded Brother, and today on Gunplay TV, we're taking a look at the all-new Odin Turbo LEP flashlight from Olight. So if you're not already subscribed to the channel, I'd ask that you pause this video now, scroll down, take a look for that subscribe button, and once you found it, go ahead and give that a click for me. I do appreciate it. Without further ado, let's get straight into the video. Reach for the sky. Now, if this Olight Odin Turbo is something that you might be interested in grabbing, make sure that you head down to Olight's site. I've got an affiliate link in the description. They are doing a flash sale for a limited time, of course. That's going to be from 8 p.m. on the 28th of May until 11.59 p.m. on the 28th of May. Okay, and so a very, very, very short window this time around. It's only going to last four hours okay and so the main products that they're pushing this time of course are going to be this odin turbo as well as the balder mini which we saw on my channel previously and they've got a few other products like the olight Bulb and purple now of course if you want to pick one of these up but you missed that four hour window you can always use the discount code the bearded brother all one word and that'll save you 10 percent on this and any and all olights now of course in usual olight fashion when they introduce a new product they're running a flash sale and so this is no different. This is a new or the third variation rather of the Odin flashlight or rifle mounted weapon light series from Olight. And this one of course is gonna be a little bit different in the sense that it is an LEP or laser excited phosphor light versus the typical LEDs that we're used to in the industry. So we should see some different level performance, a different type of performance if you will, out of this particular unit. We can see here on the box, it does boast a throw of 1050 meters. So quite a bit and they're claiming all of that at a max 330 lumens and so as we know in the game of flashlights right it's not so much about lumens it's more so about candela which kind of determines the amount of brightness that reaches out the distance to a specific point on a target okay and so we've got a quick guide here before first use how to operate and get the flashlight up to speed we will not look at that at all okay and so we can see inside of the package here we do have the limited edition desert tan variety okay and so if you are interested in a specific color maybe fde is your thing you've got an fde build going this is going to be very limited edition and of course we're only going to get that reduced price during the flash sale so again if fde is your thing make sure you grab that we've also got our locking tail cap and of course that does come with an integrated proprietary olight pressure switch or tape switch if you will and of course as I mentioned before, right, this does kind of feature its own proprietary locking mechanism that'll keep it from hopefully coming loose when mounted on your firearms. I know that I had that, that problem previously. In addition to that, they do throw a couple zip ties in the box so that you can tie that down to your rail. And then lastly, we've got our proprietary Olight charging cable, magnetic of course. We've also got the proprietary Olight mounting system and as we know this light does use the surefire scout mounting pattern so if you do have an air socket mount or a mount for your surefire lights that should fit just fine of course olight always doing a bit extra and they've included this multi-position locking picatinny rail mount so you can slap this onto the side of your picatinny rail on your platform and you can either mount that light here on the side or additionally here on this bottom piece, of course, depending on how you've got that oriented on your rail, okay? And then of course, lastly, they've got some hardware in the bag so that you can tie some of this stuff down. Looks like Loctite is already included, so that's a good thing. All right, and so with all that out of the way, we can talk about some of the features of this light and kind of what makes it different from other lights on the market as well as other lights from Olight for that matter. So the Turbo actually boasts a rating of a class one LEP laser device and so it's technically a laser should be eye safe and it also is going to boast again we touched on this in the intro a 1050 meter throw with a get this 275,625 candela beam with nearly no spill so that's important to touch on we'll roll in some footage as we can but the fact that the candela is that high means you're going to get an extreme hot spot at distance a distance of course 1050 meters but what they're saying is there's very little to no spill. And so what that's saying is it's not really gonna be the type of light that's gonna give you a high level of situational awareness in the sense that when you flick that on, you're not gonna get a whole bunch of light on your periphery, right? It's gonna be more or less focused, almost like a laser beam, straight out of the front of that light, downrange to whatever you're looking at, right? 
Of course, we touched on the inclusion of the Picatinny mount. We've also looked at the inclusion, we've seen this in previous videos, of the OLED proprietary magnetic tail switch that will allow you to charge pretty much with any portable battery, computer, your car charger, or otherwise, right? And of course, this is powered by an OLED proprietary 5,000 milliamp hour, 21700 battery, okay? And so of course that is rechargeable. We test on that. So one more thing that I wanna touch on before we get into the light, right? It's extremely bright. The Candela ratings are extremely high. It does have an IPX8 waterproof rating. It comes in at 6.1 inches. It's gonna weigh about 650 grams with the battery, of course. Okay, and so the one thing that I always like to touch on with these Olights, right, they boast these crazy output numbers, but it's important to remember the way that these operate, right? And so this Olight, much like the other Olights in the past, has two modes. It has a low 90 lumen mode, and that's gonna run for 7.5 hours, seven and a half hours, and that's gonna reach out, they say at least to 600 meters, okay? And so that's gonna come in at 90,000 candela. Still, no slouch, that's higher than a vast majority of the weapon-mounted lights on the market. Now, of course, when you're in the high mode, typical of Olight, we've touched on this previously, there are step-downs that come with the usage of that high mode. Now, it's gonna kick off at 330 lumens, and we, we test on that, of course, that's gonna reach out to 1050 meters, but after about 30 minutes at that brightness, it's gonna have to step down to 180 lumens, okay? And so still very bright, no included throw distance ratings for the step down, but it's gonna run at 180 lumens for 150 minutes. So still quite a while. We're talking about a pretty decent battery life here. And then lastly, after the 150 minutes passes at your 180 lumens, it will step down again to that low mode, that 90 lumen mode and it'll have an additional 30 minutes left in its tank. And again, that 90 lumen mode is gonna reach out to 600 meters. So I imagine that the 180 lumen mode might reach out somewhere between 700 and 900 meters. And so no slouch, right? This thing is boasting some new technology. Again, we see it here. It's basically a class one laser. Now it's supposed to be eye safe. I still would not advise that you flash this in anyone's eyes, anybody, right? Maybe if they're a bad guy. Okay, and so as we look at this light, right, we'll peel off this protective lens covering there, and we can see, right, this this reflector or this housing, this beam focuser that they've got in there is a bit different from anything that I've seen, especially from Olight, right? So it's not so much a reflective housing in the sense that it doesn't have a conical reflective cone in there, right, that's used to kind of bounce that light around and focus it outwards. It really is what looks to be a glass sphere in there that's used to focus that beam. Again, we'll, we'll get this out into the woods and the dark here once the sun sets. But so far, I'm really impressed with the, the build of this. It is, it is pretty sturdy. We'll go ahead and pop this battery out. I'm happy to see that it is, in fact, removable. So that is good. We'll pull out that protective tab again. We can take a look at that 21700 battery again, 5,000 milliamp hours uh, there. So of course that's gonna be a proprietary Olight battery. I'm a little bit bummed about that. I like to be able to swap to my own batteries, batteries that might have better output, better runtime, or batteries that might have just proved to be more reliable. But all in all, pretty happy with this, right? And so we'll go ahead and click that on. We can see right off the bat, that's a very, very tight beam. Now that color that you guys are seeing, it does appear to be a bit yellowy. That is not the camera. It is yellow, more or less, to my eyes but I am impressed with the lack of spill from this particular light. It is extremely tight on my table here. Maybe that's a three inch circle. And again, we can see there is very little spill. I don't get any of that light kind of bouncing or reflecting off my hand until I enter into that beam. Now I just felt the light vibrate in my hand. Now what that means, of course, Olight has included uh, kind of a tactile battery meter, if you will, right? And so instead of having the light on the side to let you know if the battery's in, green, orange, or red condition, this will begin to vibrate with increasing frequency, kind of a haptic vibration to let you know that the battery is low. So I did just get that in my hands as I was testing this light out, which lets me know that this needs a charge up before we head out to the woods. That being said, still extremely bright. I mean, to the point that I can feel that warmth from this light on my hand. And I imagine what we're seeing here right now is the 90 lumen mode. So once we get this out to the woods here tonight, we should see a significant bump in performance. Okay, and chances are you guys have already seen some of that rolled in. All right, so we've more or less stripped this down to its core components, and I'm gonna go ahead and get ready to mount this on my 
platform, right? And so I'm not gonna do that on camera as to keep YouTube happy. I've noticed that if I do any type of attachments onto a platform, YouTube seems to get upset. But one thing I will point out before I do this off camera, we noticed the inclusion of some hardware. I mentioned that in the introduction. We can see one thing that I've noticed right off the bat. It appears that they've anodized or Cerakoted or painted the Allen wrench FDE as well. So that's pretty cool. I think I'll keep this in my toolkit. Now, if you buy one of these Olay turbos, do not throw out your hardware, not because it's painted a cool color, but you'll actually need this to loosen this Picatinny mount before you can place this on your platform. So I'll go ahead and do that now off camera and we'll come back and take a look at what this looks like mounted. All right guys, and we are back. So I've gone ahead and mounted this on the Gen 1 Galil Ace. Of course, it's empty, no magazine, no round in the chamber today. But we can see that I've gone ahead and mounted this onto the Picatinny rail. We can see kind of how that sits, right? It's more or less low profile. Again, of course, depending on how you mount this particular light. Now we can see here, I've kind of mounted mine in the slot position that's located on the bottom. Alternatively, I can use this included Olight locking mechanism and slide that light right out, kind of pushing that down as a button. And of course, if I wanted to, I can place that in kind of here on the side. Now, of course, the reason that I haven't placed it here on the side, of course, as we can see, that's not so low profile, right? It's quite a bit of distance out from the side of the rail and that's just prone to snagging, right? And so ideally, you want to mount this in a low profile position. Now, of course, depending on how you mount this particular mount, of course, I could have this rail section that's located on the bottom. I could have that up top. I personally like it down below on this particular platform. All right, and so that's back on there, right? We do have an Olight pressure switch, and that works just as you'd expect, right? A tap and hold for momentary, and a single tap and release for constant on. So no issues with this tape switch. I mean, frankly, it's not a Surefire. It's not a mod button. But for what you're getting, right, the fact that it's included in the package, that's pretty much something that you're not gonna get from any other manufacturer unless you're buying some type of special Arasaka bundle. Now, will I keep this light on this platform? Probably not, right? It is a very tight focus beam, and that's probably gonna be more suited for a long range platform, not so much this 762 with an 8.3 inch barrel, but of course it could stay on this, right? If I decided I like that. Now, of course, I do have plans for this particular Galil Ace and will continue to build this out on the channel, but I do have a specific light in mind, a specific light setup. So we'll see that change as we go forward, but just to kind of demonstrate, right, the Picatinny mounting ability with this light, it's there right out the box. Now, of course, if you're running an M-Lock rail or a key mod, God forbid, you're gonna have to look at some different solutions, right? Now, of course, that simply means you'll probably have to look at some type of mounts for your particular Olight. Arasaka makes some great mounts that'll kind of sit that light out forward and nice and snug up against the rail. So frankly, I recommend upgrading your mount anyways. Okay, and so before we take this off of the platform and kind of wrap this up, I wanna touch on Olight's locking ring here, okay? And so we can see, right, if, if I tug on this, it's not coming loose, right? And so that wasn't so much the case with some of the early Olight weapon lights. They had a magnetic tail cap. And of course, if that got snagged in your gear, or even if you grabbed it like this, right, your thumb pressure would pop that magnetic cap off and break your connection, your tape switch would no longer function. What they've done differently this time is it added a locking ring. So if I pull this out, it comes off no problem, but I have to pull from that ring. Now, of course, I haven't locked it in now. I can pull it off. And again, we can kind of see what that problem was with some of the early Olight variations. But if I take this ring and slide it forward, it's now locked and we can see that there. So Olight's kind of thought ahead. Maybe they've heard some feedback from their customers and decided, hey, let's, let's fine tune some of these solutions. I'm happy with what they've done here. It's still not a surefire tail cap, but for the most part, right, the fact that it's included and it runs out of the box, it's hard to beat that, right? And so, that is the Olight Odin Turbo, a very unique light, a new style of light, right, with the LEP technology there. And of course, being so unique, it's going to have a specific and unique use case, right? And so this light's not gonna be for everybody. The fact that that beam is so tight and there is so little spill really limits the usage of something like this. Maybe you're doing some night hunting, not so sure. I mean, chances are if you're doing night hunting, you might have some type of night vision optic to assist in that effort. And so again, the use case for this light, I imagine will come to light, no pun intended there, over time. But for me, I think I'm gonna keep this as a handheld unit, maybe keep it in my plate carrier, bug out bag, 
right? It is a very bright light. And at the end of the day, light and candela especially can be used as a weapon and a self-defense tool. And so I think with a light this bright, you've got a good chance of disorienting any threat that might be coming your way. And frankly, the ability to reach out to over 1,000 meters is pretty substantial. So without further ado, guys, I'm the bearded brother. I'm gonna go ahead and get up out of here. But before I do, let me know in the comments what you guys would like to see more of. Again, I really wanna make sure that I give you guys the content that you're looking for, all right? And so with all that being said,